Great, great, great experience for you guys today. Uh, let's have another gonna say, Woodenville. Have a Woodenville. And while we were talking about Trisha and Gila and the like, you should play that clip of Tr uh, Ethan calling Gila Trisha. Cause we don't yeah, look at that. You, Ethan is falling in love with this Trisha. We'll show you that clip. I got some other gags here that I'm dying to, to chomp at here. Oh my god! Um, as well, uh, some hidden gags. I don't even know about throughout these the gags. week. You know, I, I really got to start doing that every week. I want to go on Amazon and figure out what could be a funny gag or a funny look or a funny update. But now I want to start spending the money. I want to, you know, I, I used to have very cheap plastic cactus cups or something like that. Very funny, but <clears throat> I want to up that. Get some very expensive cactus cups or <laughs> maybe. Can somebody make me? And if you could do, I know we got woodworkers out there, glass blowers. Is there anybody out there that could make me a tiki cup? You know, about a seven inch high tiki cup. But instead of that classic tiki, man, you know, tribe, but man, it's a carved out George Floyd. Can somebody imagine that? But it's in tiki brown. So. You know, and it's got those, it's made out of wood. Maybe it's carved out of wood. Maybe it's a ceramic. I like a wood carved tiki glass. It's very hard to find those these days. They've bought them all up. And I want to talk about something very important. It has nothing to do with fools bashing or comedy or hate. Old cool stuff is very scarce right now. Seven years ago, Here's an example. Seven years ago, you could go on eBay and type in pinball machine. And you would see so many options that you would think, oh, there's no rush to buy a pinball machine. I could buy one of these cool 80s pinball machines any day, any time. They're only 2300 but Okay. Cut to today. Type in pinball machine. You could scroll. You'll get to the end of the list. And guess what? They're all $7,500 minimum, and none of them are cool. The Aerosmith pinball machine, gone. The Rambo pinball machine, gone. The Ninja... All the coolest pinball machines are taken. Everybody thought they were cool. Everyone went on eBay. Everyone got one. It's scraps that are left. You're going, okay, who cares? I was looking for a tiki, vintage tiki cup the other day. Those are all gone, too. All you have are reproductions. This could be it for the cool old stuff. You know, I always wanted a cigarette vending machine in my house. I always thought those were cool. You know, I grew up in the uh, 80s and 90s, and every weekend, my uh, I had this white trash shitty uncle, and he was part of a bowling league. In a town that I couldn't even tell you. I went to this town every week for five years. I couldn't tell you. It was like they blindfolded me and put me in the trunk. I couldn't tell you where the fuck it was. And it was probably only 30 minutes from my home. It was so old. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. And outside of Chicago, throughout the 80s and 90s, those suburbs remained as is, as they were from like the 60s and 70s. So I dig into these childhood memories and I start remembering my grandparents' little apartment that they had. It was like a fucking 70s weirdo. It doesn't exist in today's timeline. Do you remember your grandma? Do you ever remember your grandma dying and you went to her apartment and you, your family said you guys could take what you want? Yes, all you of ever my remember aunts this? fought over the stuff and everybody argued and we yeah. had the garage Have sale. Have you done this with your family? It's a beautiful thing. I don't know if this is a legit thing. I don't know where families got this. Who gives the rule book to what families do when a relative dies? But they have this thing where they're like, oh, your grandma's dead. We're all going to her apartment to dig through her belongings and take what you want. And everybody went there, the whole family. And I'm... I went in your drawers. I'm stealing all the change. I was addicted to change back then. You know, my eyes would light up. Oh, my God. Look, she's got a collection of quarters. I want those. That's cash. I could use that. Trade that in. I don't need this crap. But I remember her apartment. They had these low-ceilinged apartments where every room was divided up. There was no open floor plan. 
everything was a separate room. You had about eight dens that were all a carpeted square room, yes, musty ass fucking room. My basement had like so many rooms. Your grandma had insane. a basement? Yes, there was a basement. Where I come from, grandmas do not have basements, bro. One of the rooms bro. was only jars, like canning jars for jams yeah. and stuff. And it was all shelves. And then there was like 50 other rooms where God knows what happened in there. This guy says, my grandma dying. Oh, yeah, it was a joyous day. I will hardly forget. I wish I had a grandma that was alive today to die at my hands. Because I would turn that funeral upside down. Tiki funeral. <laughs> a tiki-themed funeral. My grandma wanted nothing to do with the Caribbean. But I decked this place out like a black calypso. Uh, so I went on eBay and I uh, tried to get a tiki glass. They're all gone, too. There is a time that is almost buried and gone, all right? I'm getting worried about this. I thought I had my whole life to decorate with all these bar collectibles and old school. I've always been obsessed with vending machines from the 80s. So what I was saying is I, I went to this once a week. I went to this weird bowling alley. This is where my whole style comes. This is where everything comes from. I went to this old Brunswick bowling alley. This is way before bumpers. This is way before Cosmic. It was a beige, tan, and smoke yellow bowling alley. You ever been to one of these? Everything is wood grain or everything is shitty brown, Indian brown, I call it, or a beige or a yellow. And this bowling alley was like no other. You would walk in. You'd hear the sounds of the pins on a Sunday morning. You'd walk in and during the uh, right in the opening of this bowling alley, was an old school lunchbox from Roseanne style diner. I mean, the women working there are old ladies in diner outfits. They got the diner counter. They got the booths with the brown leather. It was, I mean, really, it was like not since the 60s or 70s did they upgrade it, even though this was the late 80s and 90s. In that bowling alley, they had a bar. Uh, and you could tell at night, man, oh, the single people in there. What do they call those singles? What is another word for singles where they all meet up on like a singles night? And What do they call a bunch of singles? Bunch of Co-eds. Pathetic. No. <laughs> These are old people. They're old people. And you could tell this bowling alley bar on a Friday or Saturday night, you could just feel the energy of the type of people that were there. And it had the old 80s style jukebox. Another thing, you go to eBay, type in 80s jukebox you can't even believe that's a thing you know uh, uh, this big fucking weird thing with all the little album names and all these buttons and stuff like that and they just don't make that anymore this bowling alley had it it had this old everything was cigarette -y and dark and now I've found that now that I have the, uh, the luxury here I want to buy all these items I want all that stuff from that Brunswick bowling alley. To me, the vending of an old bowling alley, uh, that intrigues me. I've always been obsessed with vending machines. When I saw the movie Big, the reason I even rewatched that movie was to see that he got that Pepsi machine <laughs> in his apartment. I couldn't believe it. A Pepsi machine in the apartment. I'll tell you this. You go on and you see what's left there and it's slim pickings, but you're looking at the vending machines and you're going, do I even want this? What am I going to do? Buy sun-kissed cans of pop from myself all day and then restock it? What's going on here? It's just a big brown junky metal machine. <laughs> so vote one if you want me to buy all these classic vending machines and create... A really cool place, like that Nicolas Cage movie where he goes into the, into the showbiz pizza and kills all those animals. What was that movie called? Oh, yeah. We just watched. What the fuck? Willie's yeah. Wonderland. Willie's Wonderland. Do I build this Willie's Wonderland? Do I become more tiki? Do I become more Brunswick? Hmm. I don't know. I'm in this period of my life where I want to be around dirty filthy bar vending things so if you could think of what else was in a bar that i could buy in the house that lights up that you put coins in and again i'm on ebay i'm on etsy coin opera i'm typing in every phrase i could think of coin operated machine light up old vintage machine there's nothing left 
So if you have leads on this type of stuff, I'm telling you I need it or else. Do you like that kind of stuff? Do yes, you want it in the I house? I want like a house that has a normal first floor, completely normal, relaxing, okay. minimalist. Really? Then you go down into the basement. There's no basement in any house I'm ever owning. So get this out of your head unless you're meeting a new man. <sighs> I don't do but basements. To, to me, a basement is basement. a corny Jewish pl- hellhole. But it's cool. It's Brunswick. No. Basements are cheats. I-, I really feel this way. A basement, first of all, doesn't exist in nature. You never go to a place that's a fucking basement. If you do, it's so seedy that it has character. It works. If it's a little basement, Chinese place, you know, from like uh, one night in Japan or but whatever. it doesn't have to be the basement. It could be like there a is no wing. basement in my house. A basement cheapens everything. You put a pool table in the in a basement, and it makes the pool table eight degrees lamer. I can't explain it. You put a, a arcade system in a basement. It lamens. It worsens these machines. I'll tell you what takes guts to say, I don't need a traditional living room. I don't need my in-laws to come over and sit there in front of some boring coffee table. My living room is this bowling alley bar, and you come in, and what? You can't be at a bar? You're at a bar. I like it. You're here, and you walk in, and you're hit in the face with a cigarette machine smashed where an end table should be. So I have a couch here, and right here is the giant... See, it's a hodgepodge. Doesn't it being, you need the right house. Doesn't it being a basement, though, add like a nostalgic vibe? No, like, not to me. So a basement memories? to me is where Jews go to sin. <laughs> I'll explain later. A basement to me is where a Jewish kid goes down to get yelled at. And this is what if a basement you're in a basement, a basement always has a mom screaming from upstairs for you to come up. A basement is a safe kids room but imagine the basement sucks i want basement. glass i want i want ground level aren't all of your best memories from being like 13 years old basement focus i know those were the worst no memories mom. of my life every basement i've ever been into was a mistake and if i could take it back i would i feel like some good stuff happened no. good stuff so happened to me floor. above ground <laughs> at real bars at real places with real problems I want to be above ground. If not, I want to. I want to have a house that's so crazy. Oh, all of the people saying that you live in your mom's basement that have affects, triggered you. Well, that's triggered me as well. But <laughs> um, I don't. I don't like a basement. I think it's a gay uh, rec room. I don't like that. Have some guts. If you really love this stuff, you'll put it on the ground floor. Okay. What is your? What are you so afraid of? Someone's going to come over and think you're odd. I want no, I'm not afraid of some that. gaming. I want, listen, and there's not a lot of stuff you can get. You need a big place. I want to walk into my house and it's like a, the buzzing of a casino. There are people there. There are guests. There are people working. I like that. And I like knowing I'm surrounded by things that could take my money almost. <laughs> I really want to, I'm hot to spend. I want like there to be a place where I could buy snacks, even snacks I don't like. If I have the option to buy them, they're more intriguing to me when I'm in a situation where there's not a lot to buy. I want to be surrounded by coin-operated machines and little snack bars, and you can maybe get nachos. It's a limited menu. It's not a good menu. It's arcade. I, I want to go to a place that's not n- n- not. Not an arcade, nor a casino, nor a bar. It's a place just for me. I, you know, I don't care for arcade games, and I don't care for slot machines or casino games, but I want those rooms combined and having things like that, that look and sound like that, but that aren't gay and played out like arcades or gambling. You know what I mean? I need, I what could the, these machines be? And I want to be surrounded by coin-operated machines, but nothing, I can't tell you which one. A gumball machine, I don't want it. A sticker machine, no. Where you're pushing in five things, you I get a Britney like Spears. A sticker machine. It's nice. Doesn't light up enough. Mm-hmm. I like a light up. A slot machine, There's a. that's another one. Good luck finding a cool slot machine. They're taken. They're all gone. 
every uh, decorator, every person decided this is cool now, and you could get it for dirt cheap on eBay, and they've bought it all up. There's nothing left. So I don't even like pinball, but I'm obsessed with the pinball machine in my house. If I go to a bar or something, there's a pinball machine, I don't look twice. But if it's in my house, I'm right. What about a soft serve ice cream machine? They're saying it's pretty cool. A foosball table. No, foosball, no. Very. A red bar penny presser machine. Now that, That's there you one. go. That's right up my alley. A penny presser, it imprints Abraham Lincoln or something onto the penny. Um, you know, one of those molderamas would be cool from the zoo where it makes you a dinosaur out of green plastic. It's this giant looking jukebox machine and makes a green gorilla. That would be nice, but that takes up a lot of space. Cigarette vending machine is my number one. A mint condition, cool, brand centric machine where the whole top row is cools. Chocolate fountain. There. No, saying. no, no. You're Dart off. Dartboard. That's not a machine. Nope. Dartboard is uh, completely cringe. Someone says, "Show him this." Let's Show see what this. it is. is it, do people like this type of stuff? I feel like I'm tapping people into the. Um, Ooh. I feel like we're missing this in today's day and age. We're not surrounded by all those cool contraptions, and you know, half the love people of people are sending me a lot of good links. By the way, oh good. So thank you to everybody. When I was a kid, half the going to the arcade was just you're surrounded by all these. Machines that are lighting up and making noise. As, as long as I could remember, I'm really trying to get in touch with this. When I was a kid, I loved light up crap. It didn't matter if it was cheap. I'd go to the, you ever dad take you to the zoo or something, and you'd see they're selling a bunch of light up crap at a stand for really overpriced prices. My parents refused to buy me any of that. Like a little wand, it had a light in it, and then these like tassels, and it would, or something like that. You really wanted that wand. I wanted it all. Um, and those were too overpriced. My parents wouldn't buy those for me. But I am into light up crap. I don't know why. And I want more little lights around me. You know, we're building this epic living room finally, or just anything in the living room that I've ever wanted, we're putting in this living room. And it's really coming together nice. Great. And now we're getting lie. all these little light things. Wait till you see. I got real to real players. Maybe we'll post a pic. Maybe I will post a pic when I'm it's scared. done. We're making this little lounge. Everything is perfect. And um, but we need some of these classic items. You know, your a whole sit down Pac Man table. Those are cool. I'll tell you why they're not. They've been <laughs> remade. You could buy them at Best Buy. Exact replicas now. They've made. They sell them at Best Buy for four ninety nine. So it's not a find. It's not. You could buy them new now. They've they've remade them. It's a shame. It's a shame. But send in your best machines. If I you want that machine. Aerosmith pin, pinball machine. If you know a guy, and and here's the other thing. Nobody's selling anymore because it's all too cool to sell now. And it's not worth it. People would rather keep, you know, the Aerosmith pinball machine. It's probably sold to an Aerosmith fan. And you're not going to get that from him. His price? A million. So because of Instagram, because of all this stuff on the internet, you, you can't get your hands on anything cool well, anymore. Maybe those guys will start buying NFTs and they'll have to put their cool stuff up I'm for sale. I'm telling you, we're in a cool things drought. And uh, before you go invest in Bitcoin and NFTs, think about it. This might be the last time you see something from your past that's cool ever again. You might want to buy it up before it's too late. I'm buying up that whole Brunswick Lanes. That's how our house is going to be decorated. Uh, an exact replica of that bowling alley. And it, you're not going to like it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on. I thought that was a nice thing to talk about. It's your interests. People it's my interest. It's my new your interest. your hobbies and interests? It's my hobby, finding these things. And I got a couple surprises of things that I did found and bought that you don't even know about. A Zoltar. That's the best machine. A Zoltar. I want that. Yeah, send her a whole list. Let's move on. Let's they, have, see. they have one for 8000 bucks. A Zoltar. You up for it? Should I order now? How tall is it? It is... Oh. Okay. I think this is enough. There's a lot of people. Believe me, I could hear the reviewers now. 
They were talking about light up fucking crap. I, I couldn't like even stuff follow like, it. I like to hear about your interests, even though I already know I them. I couldn't even follow it. Engaging the listeners. All right, please, Jules, give us a goddamn topic oh, you're here. You're supposed to play the one of uh, oh, Ethan. Okay, here, here you go. Look at this. He's falling in love with this Trisha here. Is this queued up? 243.33? No. 117.30? 32.40. Good. Oh, oh, no. Okay, that's the wrong one. You got to click the first one first. But this is a nice... Where? H3 bitch moment. That's all I have. This is the only link You don't I have, have one that says Ethan calls Hila Trish? No. What the fuck is going on with I Ethan? know. I don't understand. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll refresh. Let I'll me refresh. No, don't text. It won't work. Let me refresh. And uh, we'll see what happens here. There it is. See? So we need a cold refresh. Okay. This is serious. All right. Uh, Ethan calls Hila Trisha. 3240. Let's see how Gila looks. Let's rate Gila and not bail on it and not get scared. Let's see 3240. Um ooh, Gila is looking smoking here. She's changed her hair color since. Um uh, now I've envisioned her naked. I could tell you guys this. It is good. Have no fear. Eth uh Gila's body is amazing. It's tan, it's smooth. It doesn't have as many bony bumps as you'd think. It's beautiful. Her muff. Um, I imagine it to be like Ethan Klein's hair. Ethan Klein's got some granny ass curls. Some granny ass tendrils. I mean, sometimes his hair is so curly, I get embarrassed thinking that I'm being the one who's embarrassed. Like, I get embarrassed for him when i see his hair and how gay it looks <laughs> um let's hear him call his own oh. let's hear him call his own wife trisha this would be like if i called jules chrissy <laughs> uh so here's hila looking fine as fuck smelling like three day old herring with those legs open and that giant fucking long ass it's twat. It's 32, 40. Imagine how long that twat expands. That brown stretch. What do they call that when you're driving through the highway and there's like a safe, slower zone that's like, don't speed here? The school zone? No, we were driving down a long stretch of highway. We drove down one of these and then it says, do not speed here. This is like a special zone where it's even yeah, more dangerous to call? speed. Imagine the brown, lank, lanky, long pussy that wraps from here all the way around. But if you took it off and flattened it out on the table, you know how like her pussy, it goes, oh, it's so long. There's so much space. And she says, oh, if you unwound, it'd be like a fruit by the foot length. And the only reason it looks somewhat normal is because it's being curved curved on her body but again flatten that out Ooh, you got a series of problems you've got a real long trench you ever seen that movie 1913 where it was a trench based film yes of course they were all fighting in these trenches it was a trench based piece and uh <laughs> it was mara uh, uh, remarkable uh, about how long these trenches were very similar enforcement corridor is the word. Really? That's what they say. You're talking about that long pussy. By the way, you're supposed to be at 32. And by the way, Gila, every woman that you've helped, I'd like to make suffer. You understand? But I want to help girls and I think people should tell me their names. I will reverse whatever help you've given to anyone. You know, she has this two point. I'm not kidding. Gila Klein, you think she's just some dump sidekick that, that gets knocked on. She has 2.5 million Instagram followers. She's become a queen to women. She has 2 million? I thought she just hit 1 million. Oh, well, check it. Does it even matter? <laughs> Imagine a million. She has 1 million. Oh, okay, 1 million. Who has 2.5? Crystalia, probably. That wow. We're just looking at. There's one million fans on there. She posts a picture, and it's all these little girls that are inspired by Hila Klein, the CEO of Teddy Fresh. Who She's like a be? style icon to people. 
Duh. And so she helps people. So again, give me their names then. Because whatever you giveth, I'll taketh <laughs> away. You get it? That's what I'm going to start doing. That's how we can combat these people. Oh, I donated all this money to, to an Asian family. All right, well, wait till you see what I'm going to do to a separate Asian family to even all this out. So don't make a donation. It'll be evened out. And that will get you back to square one. Save your money and save a family. Listen to this. 3240. Oh. Listen to this. You're going to love this. And he calls his own wife, Trisha. Again, this would be like if I called Jules um, Feehan. <laughs> oh, Feehan. I love you, Feehan. Who is my secret crush. Here you go. Uh, Hila Klein and uh, tr uh, his wife. It's like, right. And that's, yeah, and that's where I was. I just, again, it's like you said, it was a character assassination. Yeah, exactly. AB. Like, uh, initially, yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> wow. Right. This is not a deleted scene or a blooper. I can't believe what I'm showing you. It's been a couple coughs and a couple gags and some noise floor <laughs> coming from a window unit. And a bunch of miserable looking people. Imagine if you tuned into Red Bar and you saw... And you're sick. These scenes of misery. I mean, really, this looks like when you look at a black and white picture of a cemetery, you get the same feeling as this. This is a dreadful image. It's their Holocaust blood, I suppose. Let's uh, continue and hear this Trisha part. <laughs> this is their show. <laughs> this is their show. Right. Alfredo's looking at me like, what the fuck? And also, like, um, it's coming up on one, so. <clears throat> should, uh, one and the ad? What is happening? All right, Trisha, you want to do the ad? Mm, Trisha? She'll be like, fuck you, AB. Oh, I out! <laughs> he doesn't even realize. He just powers through. You have to see the retard age. I mean, really? If this was a character on SNL, played by Kristen Wiig, mixed with that other little fucking short little fu fucking weirdo, this is the craziest retard lady that we have and she's now normal in the in the eyes of all these people who was that that was uh, criticizing each of the they go ethan and they did it such so snarky i would never do this but they go ethan Sila retarded remember that can't remember who that was but it's like she might actually be fully retarded it's either that or she's really ugly and has an accent but think about that I hope that when I go to other countries, they don't go, is he retarded? Does an accent sound just like a retard? I don't know. Probably. This is a mix between like retarded and an accent and you get lost in figuring out which is which. But then she, no, this is retarded. Look at her. Watch this. <clears throat> One and the ad? What is happening? All right, Trisha, you want to do the ad? Mm, Trisha? She'll be like, fuck you, A.B. Hey, <laughs> fuck you, buy it. Keeps, fuck you, A.B. <laughs> wow! You you know, you expect somebody to, to never be seen again after something like this. I actually have a personal beef with Hila right now, and yeah. that is that she's withholding the DeFranco texts. We should show everyone that. How is this any different than a skeleton in a wig? All right, got to do an ad read. Brought to you by... Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I mean, really, that's trippy. <laughs> trippy! All right, we've got so many great little tapes to show you today. Should we get to a... The DeFranco Bert? texts. N n this is, that's more H... I, I really can't. I can't. They've Fuck, been there's was... people that were not interested in H three stuff. But I we just obsessed, did two hours. But this it doesn't matter, Joel. This is about Philip DeFranco. Doesn't matter. We'll do it a different time. I'm not interested. And you got guys reviewing me that are gonna go fucking nuts. I think the reviewers would want to hear about the DeFranco text. The reviewers do not care about that. Damn, that was my most excited moment. Come on, moment give me the, the bird clip. Shut the hell up with your most excited moment. Wow. I'm telling you, the moment sucks. Uh, here's the the scoop. Philip DeFranco sent a crazy text to Ethan, and Ethan and Gila will not reveal that it's from him, but they've alluded to it. And it says, fuck you, stop making fun of me because I'm fat. There it is. You want more? 
Go watch H3 for the full scoop. And I think I'm going to turn this. I think I'm going to just... Come on, let's do the Burt Kreischer thing. It's at the top. All right. Can you say that again? They sound like you're crying. I am crying. Oh. You know, this Philip DeFranco, should we just cover everything H3 has done all week? Do six hours of that? You've become obsessed with Teddy Fresh. This is the problem. You've become obsessed. She's taking it. It's a Everyone joke. in the chat is going, I want the text. Take DeFranco down. There's no yes, text. There's nothing to say. There's want. nothing else to say Show about us. it. Show us, please, please, please. But that's fine. <sighs> It's no, it's, it's too late. It's not you our already... story. I wasn't going to even cover that ever. Oh my God. It's not God. our story to cover. It's H3 is covering it. We would be co covering it. We don't do that here at Red Bar. The listeners and you have gotten confused on how this works. We don't co cover other people's stories and then just show you how great they were. It's not it's our not story. It's, it's not our it's scoop. It's an expose of Philip DeFranco, who I hate so much. He's so. been exposed by Ethan. Tune into Ethan's show for that story. Not my story to cover. It's Ethan's. You've been confused. <laughs> I'll tell you when I, the texts get leaked. I do this throughout the house. She'll be walking around the house and I'll be in a dark bathroom. And she'll just hear this as she passes the hall. <laughs> she'll go are you hissing yeah. that's horrifying imagine if you're just like chilling and then you're like you just hear somebody because it's it really unexpected time it's not like i'm goofing around at the time you'll be like on the couch and i'll be up for a while yeah. and then you'll just hear deep with deep within the hallway you'll hear And you'll be like, what is he doing? Why? <laughs> Why? And then you just to sound like then I walk, naturally. You don't to even you. do anything. Then I walk in the room and she'll look at me and she'll go, You're hissing? And I'll go, Yeah. <laughs> People, you guys don't hiss? <laughs> hissing is hissing's fucked up. Like, think about if there was a guy that actually hissed when he got like agitated. Like a cat, you know? Yeah. Like, imagine if there was a guy and every time he was, like, fed up with something, he couldn't help it, but but to hiss, he would aggravate or something. <laughs> I feel like if anyone could pull off that, it's me. You know what? But you don't do it when you're angry. You do it when you're, like, feeling cute. I hear about... Whimsical. You know what I want to do right now? I hear by coin. The podcaster hiss, 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 hiss. It's all out of juice. It's out of juice. It's out of no. juice. Turn that off. Turn it off. I coined the podcaster hiss. It could only be heard here. <laughs> hey, you know Red Bar is? Yeah. Oh, that guy who hisses a lot. <laughs> it's like my catchphrase. <laughs> well, do you think people will get a kick out of that? Yes. Red Bar. It's that guy who hisses. Tell him that. Be, you know, not Red Band, the guy who hisses. So, yeah, this should be the new... <laughs> Isn't that something? That's me. We've You've been around for the... Oh, when did he just start hissing? It's really funny to listen to old Red Birds where Mike doesn't hiss. <laughs> it's like uh, when I didn't have a beard, you know? It's like this whole different universe. Ooh, scary. Yeah. So pre-hiss Red Bar was 10 minutes ago. You guys are now part of post history. This is the show with that guy who hisses. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. And uh, congratulations on being here today uh, to uh, to be here for that. Remind me to hiss. It's time to hiss. Okay, what do we got next? I want to show these people. The two bears on cave yeah. flip. Look at this, guys. We've heard Big J and Dan Soder cope about us. We've heard Luis J. Gomez join the obeyment list, even though he's an actual dear friend. We've seen even the likes of Chrissy Marr try to get on that obeyment list. Who else? Aaron Bergs tried to jump on there. Annie Lederman on the obeyment list. Joey DeRosa from Joey's uh, Joe Sandwich, Joey Subs, his famous sandwiches in New York City, making him about $38 in profit per week. Um even though he's got to work countless day and night 
to just make that little bit of money. Who else is on that obeyment list? I mean, we've had comedians really come around and you're hearing all of them talk about us. We've got one that we've never gotten before. The two papas, the two bears, Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer. Bert saw a clip. Thank you to the Los Angeles Clippers. We've got an epic annual Clippers dinner coming up. Most of you who have RSVP'd this already. So if you haven't gotten your invitation, start panicking now, Clippers. Invitations were sent out, received last week. FedEx Air Saver. Um, and um, thanks to the Clippers. And this is why I'm taking them out to this epic all-expense paid dinner. They're going to love it there. Um, they were cutting up clips of me talking about Burt Kreischer, and this is the first time Burt Kreischer has ever stumbled upon one of these. He doesn't realize he's been made fun of on this show for about six, seven years. Maybe eight, nine years. I don't know. The time's flying. He saw this clip. He started following the rabbit hole about Burt Kreischer Red Barkley. His heart <laughs> was... I mean, he swallowed his heart. It went into his stomach, and then it became this disaster downstairs. He can't fucking believe it. He has no idea what to do. Apparently, this is probably the worst thing he's ever heard about himself. Would you like to see Burt Kreischer react and tell us about, and you're not going to like it. This is not obeyment. He's going the stubborn way. Do we have the clip, Jules? Yeah. Great. Bert's going the stubborn way. This is phenomenal. Is everything okay there? Yep. Really? I mean, yeah. do you want to fill me in on what's going on? You look really disturbed there. Oh, no. I was just looking at something. I saw on my phone, but it's nothing. Okay. Is everything's fine? Yeah. Because some days, you know, for those you who don't know, the reason I ask her, some days we're under like high alert. We're, I mean, really bad stuff that we can't even tell you on the show. Raids, swats. So when she's looking at her phone like that, I think the worst. I think uh, it's a Jewish swatting. It's just Frank Pellegrino and Chrissy getting mad about you on Twitter. Oh, well, this is great news. Send that over. But this, uh, what we're about to show you, let's reset here. Let's reset. And I, I just want you to be off the phone. I think what's distracting me is you being on a phone while I'm trying to speak. It's uh, it's just something like, you know how um, if you see a kid on her phone at dinner, even if she's just looking at the menu. It's repulsive to the dad. I'm listening to everything he's saying. I have to do two things at once. I, I understand. It's it's literally the visual that's throwing me off. We were at a restaurant the other day, and they're doing this thing because of COVID at a restaurant now where you scan a QR code, and it pulls up the menu on your phone. They don't want to print menus anymore. It's too covid -y for them. I go, why can't you just print disposable paper menus and just throw them out? No, no, no. They figured out a way. Oh, it costs us nothing. Now they could just scan the QR code, go online. I find that, first of all, inappropriate to the older people there. They don't want to do it. Yes, they have the smartphone. I watched this woman walk around and teach eight elderly guys how to do it. And it's not about them not being able to learn. They don't want to. Give them a paper menu. <laughs> Stop wasting their time. But have you been to these restaurants with the QR codes because of COVID? This is what it looks like now. You got two people on their cell phones and the waiter's there. And now you've got a guy on his cell phone. And yeah, he's just looking at the menu, right? But watch this. Imagine there's a waiter here. And I'm like, yeah, um, doesn't it look like I'm just being rude? to the If someone took a picture, they'll go, look, the waiter's there and this guy's on his cell phone. It's rude. I picked up on this the other day. And now I pick up on it again. You're on your cell phone working. If you were on your computer working, it wouldn't be distracting. But the cell phone, we've learned, it's like a sign of disrespect to do this while someone's talking. To do this, it's repulsive. So I won't do it. Use a QR code. I demand a printed menu. <laughs> you got a printer in there? You got a Kinko's nearby? I'll look up a Kinko's for you. I'll give you my Kinko's card. You can make copies using my account. But I'm going to need a printed menu. We should do that as a nice prank. We're starting this prank show. Um, similar to Ross Creations, like a style prank show. That should be one of our prank shows, Undercover, where I'm 
Didn't we have another prank idea? Um, I know what was what that? was that one where we're we're doing some real? That was like a gnarly one. All right, it's the clip of the year. <laughs> Bert Kreischer describes his red bar experience. Everybody, Bert Kreischer watches a red bar clip and explains to Tom Segura how it made him feel. You're not gonna like this one. Forty four. 20. It's two bears, one cave. Apparently, they're coming back from break. And I like how this was kept out of the bring back group, too. Yes, no, you know, posted so that, this. It's that not everybody has seen this one. I like that when we find, oh my God, they didn't post it. Um, 44 20. They come back from break, and Bert is visibly shaken by something. And he's sitting there with that no good Tom, who we've made many videos about. Tom's another. Red Bar Denier, who pretends Red Bar doesn't exist because he's gone over it with his wife. Oh, if we mention them, that will give them. They know. Here's the thing. Tom Segura mentions me. I become famous. He's that big where if Tom Segura or Joe Rogan started going over what I've been doing to them, there's a 